We need the opposition to have a coherent policy and, and give the voters a real choice because I would argue at the last federal election we had two parties both with net zero policies. So I don't know where the choice was there. Now, nobody well, seems to have uh, told India about coal being uh, terrible and finished. Prime Minister Modi has just celebrated India's historic milestone of crossing 1 billion tonnes in coal production um, as it commits to a plan for a vibrant coal sector. Uh, Ian, China also seems to have missed the coal is bad and dead message. Its coal imports are climbing as its coal mining projects expand. It's like they care more about human progress and cheap, reliable energy and well-paid jobs than they care about Net zero fantasies. What's going on in India and China? In well, these are pragmatic governments. These are, are countries that are trying to grow. These are countries that have, for generations, been very poor countries. Now, India not only is growing its coal industry and it's mining coal in Australia, taking it to ports which are coastal and uh, having generators right next to these ports, but they're actually starting a huge nuclear industry. They've just commissioned a thorium reactor. They have a a type of reactor that can now burn the spent fuel out of a conventional uranium reactor, and they can burn this, and uh, India is going down the path of having a, <clears throat> a huge nuclear industry as well as having a huge coal industry, and China is no different. China is getting their coal deposits, uh, are getting deeper and deeper and deeper. That means they're importing more and more coal, they need this coal to grow. We are beneficiaries of that cheap energy. We are beneficiaries of the coal. And the coal that we sell China is being used <clears throat> to make solar panels, is being used to make wind turbines and to put our coal mines uh, out of productivity and put our uh, coal-fired generations out of production. This is just madness. We should be looking at the cheapest energy that can be found we are an energy-rich country, yet our two major sources of energy, uranium and coal, we are um, trying to ignore or wind down. This is madness. It's self-inflicted madness, and uh, we're going to have shortages shortly. Victoria's t they're talking about next winter having a gas shortage. When we're on... Decades of reserving. We've got so much gas in this state, but there's no exploration. Well, in Victoria, there is plenty of gas. I have seen the uh, wombat wells in the uh, onshore Gippsland Basin. I've seen them flare. This means that there's gas there. Those wells, those five wells, are only a few kilometres from an existing pipeline. The gas coming out of those wells doesn't need to have mercury and carbon dioxide taking out of it. Victoria, in the eastern part of Victoria, has got a huge amount of gas. In the western part, underneath the Portland smelter, which is absolutely crippled with energy costs, there are gas deposits. There are gas deposits in the Otway Basin offshore. Victoria is digging its own grave. And to make matters worse, not only do you and Victoria have an appalling Labor government, you have an opposition that only seem to want to fight amongst themselves. They don't want to fight. What is happening in Victoria? And that is Victoria is going down the gurgler. The Victorian Liberals have mm. a terrific opportunity to do something and all they want to do is, is to fight over crumbs. Ian Plymer, it's always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you so much for your time tonight.